ഹമ്മദില്ല <Sessizlik> أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وجاهدوا في سبيله لعلكم تفلحون وقال تعالى ومن يعش عن ذكر الرحمن نقيض له شيطانا فهو له قرين وَإِنَّهُمْ لَيَسُدُّونَ وَإِنَّهُمْ وَإِنَّهُ لَيَسُدُّونَهُمْ عَنِ السَّبِيلِ وَيَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم حجبت النار بالشهوات وحجبت الجنة بالمكاره أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا مولانا محمد وبارك وسلم Alhamdulillah, all praise due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most gracious, the most merciful. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all his gifts and favors that he has restored upon us. And we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us the tawfiq and the life to be early for Jummah today. The ayat that I have recited before you, one ayah, Allah, one ayah translates and the, the, uh, it translates, Ya ayyuladhin amanu taqullah. O you who believe have taqwa of Allah, wa jahidu fi sabili and strive in his way. Whenever in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions taqwa of Allah and he mentions and and then gives says something else after that, the correlation between the two is that the, the way you have taqwa, taqwa of Allah is the goal. The way you have taqwa of Allah is what's, what's being told to you after. Right? So when it says, have taqwa of Allah and strive in his way. So the, so the, so the understanding of that ayah is that the way you can have taqwa is by striving mujahada. Mujahada means making an effort. So just like anything in life, we have to make an effort for it. Taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Nothing is free in life and nothing is, right? You have to make efforts for things. So taqwa of Allah also requires mujahada. You're striving continuously. And then and you keep trying, striving, 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 striving. And when you'll be from the muttaqeen, inshaAllah, right? So it's just a journey. Uh, it's, it's a journey. The hadith that I've recited translates that jahannam, jahannam is covered up by desires. Meaning that if you wanted like the path to Jahannam, just follow all your desires, you'll get there. Just, just you know, be that kind of person that you want to just follow all your desires. You understand? You're not saying, you're not putting any brakes on and anything. You just want to follow your desires. That's the path that leads to Jahannam. And Jannah is, is uh, veiled by the things that are displeasurable to you, right? Hardships, makare, things, you know, that are, that seem like hard on you. But you go against your nafs and do the right thing anyway, right? Some of the things are hard on you. And you, you know, put your foot on your nafs and you do it anyway. Do the right thing. You know, you humble yourself. So Jannah is covered by these difficulties. So this is the verse and this is the hadith that I've recited before you. But my topic today is about that a human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given three powers, three qualities that I want to speak to you and I about. That every human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prayed, placed three powers within him. And you have to be... Um, uh, and these are powers, you can call them, qualities, potentials. And what are these three qualities? One is Quwwatul Malakiyah, the strength of the angelic power. So you have the ability to be an angel, angel like qualities, spiritual activities. And the other is Quwwatul Shaytaniyah, the devilish. Okay, one is the angelic power. You also have the second, second impulse. So these are impulses within you, meaning that these are your own body will react. Uh, shaytaniya, all the shay- what's quwwatu shaytaniya? All the bad, all the neg- all the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa taala is quwwatu shaytaniya. So that will be an impulse within you. So if you do, if you listen to that impulse, then your strength, your shaytani strength becomes stronger. If you listen to the impulse of malakiya, the angelic, then your angelic side becomes more, um, more, more strengthened. And the other one is quwwatu haywaniya, 
the animalistic, the bestial power, and that is just two. It's your stomach and the private area. Understand? So that's your bestial. Understand? That's what you share in common with the animals. The animals, their goal is just these two things: the stomach and the private area. They just they they their their life. That's their life goal. Understand? So if you just listen to that, then you have that strength that goes. Now the, the, the strength that we need to increase is obviously which one? The angelic. With the angelic son, Allah, all the gifts that you hear, Jannah, ease on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, you know all the ease, all the gifts that you hear about, they're all going to be granted if your your Quwwatul Malakiyah is up. Does that make sense? Not, you're not giving a, you're going to get any gifts by having your Quwwatul Shaytaniyah up or by your Quwwatul Haywaniyah up. There's no reward for that. In fact, there's punishments for that. Right? All the punishments are for Quwwatul Haywaniyah and Quwwatul Shaytaniyah and all the reward is for Quwwatul Malakiyah, understand? the angelic. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us. So today inshallah I'm going to speak to you about these three qualities and we're going to try to think about them and reflect upon these three powers of ours. So Quwwatul Malakiyah, the angelic, sabr, shukr, taqwa, right, piety, right, that a person uh, displays, zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making dua, rahmat, having mercy on people, you know that feeling that you get when you see a poor person, you feel like giving him something, right? That's your quwwat malakiya. So it's this, it's this impulse. We have to work on it. Meaning once that call comes, you have to listen to that call and follow it. Now if you don't listen to that call, that, that call will shut down. That impulse of yours will become weaker. So you have to follow that impulse. That the impulse of righteousness. Then the second one is quwwatush shaytaniya. What the shaitania is the evil planning, plotting, scandals, um, you know, just uh, trying to uh, hasad, jealousy, uh, uh, booze, understand? animosity with people, or ujub, thinking yourself to be self righteous, that you are great. You know, what is everybody talking about? You already reached it. Understand? You're already so great, mashallah. Self praise. Understand? You don't have that any, any affirmation from anyone else, but yourself, your brain likes to give yourself affirmation. It's a form of takabur. Takabur has many forms. One of them is ujub. Status. Um, and, and in that status, it means the um, contrary to sharia. Obviously, there's a right way to get status in life too. Obviously, status is a good thing to have, um, you know, have izzat, honor in the world. But this is obviously, we're talking about the negative status. So going for the negative status, going for money. Obviously, there's a positive way of going for money, but there's a negative way also of going after money. So obviously, in quwwatu shaytaniya, we mean the negative um, pursuit of wealth. Riba, backbiting, just all the bad things. Right? All the disobedience are quwwate shaytaniya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, shayateen al jinni wal ins. So if your quwwate shaytaniya, if you, if, if you keep listening to that impulse of yours, then your quwwate shaytaniya is up, your quwwate malakiya is down, is weaker. It can't be that all your three powers are up. No, one of them is going to overpower the other. You have to let the angelic side take over. And if you let quwwate shaytaniya go up, then you are what's referred to in the Quran, shayateen al jinni wal ins. When Allah Subhanahu says jinns and humans, is shayateen from amongst them. So you could be a you know a human being living in the world, but you're actually a shayateen, because day in and day out, all you think about is the, the the bad stuff. And there are people like that. They like to plan how they can you know do more negative things. They're like that. That's that's their impulse. Uh, they have nothing. They have no they have no positivity in them. May Allah protect us from that. Now, so each one of these impulses, it's like knocking on a door. Like so. Take an example of knocking on the door. So when someone knocks on your door, or when you knock on someone's door, how long do you keep knocking? Well, the sunnah is you, you knock once, and then thrice, and then you leave the door. So no one just keeps knocking, and let's say the people are not opening the door. You're not going to sit there, camp overnight. Um, you, you just kind of knock, and you don't get any responses, you, you leave. So similarly, these three impulses, they knock on our conscience. It's us who open that door to, to let them in. So who have you let in? Have you let shaitan come in? Have you let your animalistic quality come in? Or is it the angelic quality? Which one have you opened the door for? Who is your companion? Who did you let in? All right. So we have to make an effort uh, on the quwwat malakiya on our angelic qualities and enhance those. That's why we're getting Ramadan. What's, what's happening in Ramadan? Malakiya is going up. Ramadan, we not, we, the absolute wrong way of treating Ramadan is that you, you, you get some Quwwat Malakiya and then after Ramadan it's all dismissed back to the normal you again. 
It's not going to work like that. It's not going to work like that. And if you don't develop quwwat al and you don't, as a community, we, we, all, we all don't develop our quwwat al our akhirat will be difficult. Our akhirat will be difficult. You can't live in this world. You're not allowed to live in this world with the quwwat um, shaytaniyya and quwwat haywaniyya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ Whoever turns away the remembrance of Rahman. There's two tafsirs. One is whoever turns away the remembrance of Rahman or whoever gets in the way. May Allah protect us from that. Right? Like one of the worst things you can do is stop others from coming to the masjid. You must be a big shaitan then. Not only that you don't go to the masjid yourself, but you're a type of person that you even stop others from going where? If somebody else is going early to the masjid, you're like, Sad an istabil. This concept is mentioned in the Quran. Allah SWT doesn't like it at all. Doesn't appreciate that concept at all. Stopping people, right? It's bad enough you're not going yourself, but you're stopping others. Like, oh, are you going to the masjid? Why are you going? So this is mentioned here. وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَانِ Whoever turns himself away from the remembrance of Rahman, or turns others away from the remembrance of Rahman, نُقَيِّدْ لَهُ شَيْطَانًا Then we will appoint for him a shaitan. Okay, that you, uh, you, you, you will become underneath, you know, the, you, you, the shaitan that each human being has. So now you'll start listening. فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينَ He becomes your friend. Basically what has happened now, because you've turned away the remembrance of Rahman, you turned away where you're supposed to go to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your duties to yours towards your deen, for you to develop your angelic sign. Since you turned all that away, so what has happened? Actually this ayah is very clear cut. It says that that shaitan becomes your best friend. Now your devilish strength is up, not your angelic side. Okay. وَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يَسُدُّونَهُمْ عَنِ السَّبِيلِ Then these shay that shaitan who's your friend, he's going to halt uh, you and people around you from the straight path. وَيَحْسَبُونَ And they think أَنَّهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ And very interesting in this ayah is this part here that when you become like that, where your quwwat is shaytaniyya is more, right, is more above than your angelic side, your devilish side is above, over and your angelic side is lower, then you actually think you're a good person. وَيَحْسَبُونَ The person thinks أَنَّهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ You're actually a guided man. It's one of the, it's one of the, how would we call it, the fallacies or it's like how your brain tricks you. You think you're a guided man. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Enable us to um, get the, the angelic side forth. Today one of the things we find is that the angelic side is very low. The impulse, the pulse, when we check the pulse of the people, the, the angelic side is very low. Usually people are running on their their quwwat haywaniya or they're running on quwwat shaytaniya is more apparent. Quwwat malakiya is very, very low. Now you're going to ask me, how do you know? Obviously, we're going to know when we get to the akhirah, but it'll be too late. Look, when you show up on the Yom Al-Qiyamah, if Allah SWT tells you, oh yeah, yeah, your, your quwwat malakiya is up, your angelic, your quwwat malakiya is not up, is, does it benefit us to know on the Day of Judgment? Does it benefit us? It's too late. And Yom Al-Qiyamah will be too late. You, you, we, we, we should figure that out now. Is which, which impulse is more apparent in us, right? And who's going to tell us that? The ulama. The ulama. People of knowledge. People of knowledge have the way to tell the pulse. And it is very ironic. With other fields, we accept that. With other fields, we accept that. For example, I don't know if you've hung around with a very intelligent mechanic before. I have. You must have seen a very intelligent mechanic before. If you take your car to a very intelligent mechanic, how do they behave with you? Right? Their art. Like I was telling a mechanic, you know, oh my car is making some noise every time I'm turning, you know, my, my, the wheel and uh, I, think, I think there's something wrong with my car. I'm hearing noises from here and here and here. And the mechanic just tells me, okay, give me the keys. Let's go for a little drive. He just drives and he just turns and just by hearing noises, he's already figured out my car. And we trust him, right? He's figured out, he's like, that's his art. All his day, all he does is cars. He knows cars inside out. Just by hearing the noises, he goes, Umar, you're, you're pointing out four or five faults, but I know all the four or five faults go back to one fault. Mechanic. We respect that, don't we? We say, mashallah, what a great mechanic. Alhamdulillah, we appreciate it. What about medicine in medical? In medical, in the olden days, the, the doctor would have to see your pulse. He would just check your pulse. He just look at you, just your face, just the just the colors of your face, and just check your pulse. And he already knows, he already knows your levels. Even today, well, what do those doctors have? What do they put on you? Huh? Thesoscope. It's hard for me to pronounce that. Thesoscope. What is it? A scope. I just call it a scope. Okay. So when they put that, we trust them, right? It doesn't have any batteries in it. 
He just listens to you, goes, just breathe in, breathe out. Understand? Once you breathe in, breathe out, what is he figuring out? I don't know. I never took medic, I never went to, I never set foot in medical school. I don't know. I trust the guy. I'm sure it is a very smart reason why he's doing that. Understand? He puts his the, the scope there and, <laughs> okay, um, and he, he's doing something, right? That's his art. We trust him. Guess what? Just like how we trust that mechanic, just like how we trust that medical doctor sub, ulama are the same. Islam is like an ocean. Islam is like an ocean. And the man who's dedicated his life to studying religion, believe me, he knows Islam like that. When you come to him and you give him your pulse, the Mulana sub, by just by your pulse, he's already figured you out. He's already figured out where spirituality, where, where which quwwate malakiya, quwwate, you know, these three concepts I'm talking to you about, they can do that. So my questions to you and I is, why is it that we trust the mechanic? Why is it that we trust the doctor sahib? Why is it that, what is it, why do we lack when it comes to trusting ulama? So get rid of that, get rid of that. Realize that the ulama, they know your pulse. And don't be scared. Like, are you scared to go to a mechanic? Like, if you go to a mechanic, oh, he'll figure my car out. He'll know that my, my, you know, my brakes are bad. Is that good? Or you want, you know, if your for brakes are bad, right? So you can fix that. You don't want to get into an accident. Are you scared of doctors? What if the doctor tells you, oh, I'm sorry to say this, but I think, you know, that little pimple that you have there, it might be cancer. May Allah protect. May Allah protect all of us from cancer and everyone, each one. May Allah give us a cure for cancer soon, inshallah. I know people are working so hard. May Allah rid us of that, inshallah. But would you be happy or would you get angry at that time? You get so excited. You'd be like, Alhamdulillah, Dr. Saab, Jazakumullah Khair. I'm so glad I came to you, the right person. All right, what do we do? All right, and then he's going to give you a solution. He said, let's, let's get rid of that before it gets into your body. Look how you'll hug him. Not that you'll say, did you say I have cancer? You're not going to be offended by that. You'll, you'll embrace him. Just like that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, shaitan who's played with our heads that he's told us that ulama, no, no, they don't know the impulse. No, they know your pulse. That's their feel. So, and especially, and ulama are different. Some are more senior. Especially an alim who is running a community. He knows the pulse of the whole community. If he's a proper amir, a leader of that community. Does that make sense? So you want to get your pulse checked by the ulama. Um, each person, remember, and it's, this kind of ties into what I said last week. Last week, I don't know if you all were here for my Friday last week. Right, we talked about the concept of community. It's very important that we live in a sense of community, where there's an amir, a leader, and we could have many communities, but he has the pulse. So he's able to check. And by the way, alhamdulillah, you know, I'm, uh, Allah, I'm operating two masjids, alhamdulillah, myself. I'm not worthy of it, but Allah has put me in responsibility of that. Make dua for me, Allah SWT makes it easy for me. But my observations at the moment is that the quwwat malakiyah is very, very low. Very low. Even the imams, even like the people who are in charge of things, even their pulse is very, very low. We're all running on quwwat shaytaniyah or quwwat haywaniyah. It's very low. It's very rare I find one or two people that are very spiritual. I, can, I, I appreciate that. They don't have to be scholars, but I appreciate their sense of spirituality. I feel that, okay, this man is connected. His prayer is, he, he's connected with his creator. Ismit taqwa. Sometimes we find it young people too. Because this is from Allah. This is grace of who? The creator. He could put his fadl on whoever he likes. Sometimes I find young people like that. Sometimes it's, it's, it's nice to know. You get a teenager that we see noor on their face. We're, we were able to see that, the, the, that, okay, he's connected. He has, you know, we appreciate that in that young man. And then we also can tell when that young man is off track. Then he starts losing his noor. So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a no understanding. Look, we have Ramadan coming up. Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving us Ramadan? What's the purpose? The purpose is that your angelic side needs to become powerful above your quwwat shaytaniyah and quwwat haywaniyah. Your animalistic side and your shaytanic side, your angelic side needs to become above and be above, above it, right? In strength. And then what? After Ramadan, what? Back to normal? No, no. <laughs> then continue that path. Continue that path. That's the journey of life. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this journey easy for us. We're all going to do it, inshallah. inshallah. Actually, one of the things that's happening today is that since our, our levels have dropped, the angelic side is like, it's rare. We have all actually kind of um, normalized it for ourselves. We're all running on low. We don't have the angelics. Our angelic side is lower, right? And we've kind of normalized it because we all feel the same. 
So it's kind of like normal now not to have an angelic side. Once we get one gentleman who has a more angelic side, we get shocked, like, oh, this man is a little abnormal. Actually, that man is normal. <laughs> the person who has his angelic side up, he's actually normal. You and I are not normal. That guy is normal. Make sense? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. The scholars have pointed out that human beings have these three strengths and you have to keep the malakiya side up, up. And that's what Allah was looking for. That's what's going to make your qabr easy for you. That's what's going to make yawm al-qiyamah easy for you. Now, it's very important in children, when you have small children, to do their tarbiyah correctly. Little children, they record everything. You have to see, you have to check the pulse. The parents have to check the pulse now. Who's going to check the pulse of the kids? The own parents. They have to make sure that the... The children are not having any shaitanic pulse. They're not having any haywan, right? They're having good tarbiyah, angelic side. Teach them. You can't just take things of other people, right? You have to ask, learn to share. You have to be merciful. You have to be grateful. You have to ingrain that in that child. And so you have to keep checking his pulse as he's growing up. Some shuyukh have said that if the tarbiyah is good of a child, maybe when he grows up, he doesn't even need a sheikh. When he grows up, because his tarbiyah, the parents did the tarbiyah so well, that his angelic side was up, and then when he grows older, he, he, he needs the shaykhless. Shaykhs come into the picture when the tarbiyah has gone wrong. Now let me give you some example of tarbiyah gone wrong. For example, if you go to prisons, and some, and, and some of our shuyukh have gone to prison, this actually, you know, I was, uh, you know, heard one of our shuyukh telling us this. That there was a serial killer. I mean, you know, he had killed a whole family because he wanted to steal from the house, so he duct taped the whole family murdered them, now he's in jail, he's in trial, he's going to be put to death to this person. So the Muslims came into that jail, the Sheikh came in just to give him da'wah, that maybe he should think about Islam, he's going to die anyway. Right, we still have to, we have, you know, inmates have rights too. We have to reach out to them, give da'wah to them, right, it's part of our responsibility. They're still humans. So the Sheikh told him that, and guess what the man said, the man who's going to be killed, right, he, he murdered a family. He said, you know, he, 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 he responded like a child. He was an old man, but he responded like a child. He said, I can't go to work and, you know, work like a, he called it work like a dog. He's like, I just get whatever I want. You know, like something like a child would say, you know, like a child says, no, I can take whatever I want. And then the parent tells him, no, you can't take whatever you want. You have to ask, right? Did you ask? This is a child, parents teach their kids that. Now that adult, 60 year old is speaking like a what? He's speaking like a child. Why? is because his tarbiyah went wrong. He's, what, what power is he running on? Even, even on his, he's on death row, right? But he's still running on, he's running on quwwati shaitan, quwwati haywaniya, right? So it means that when he was young, nobody did his tarbiyah. That, that thing that children say, he's saying it at age 60. So we're finding this. When people's tarbiyah goes wrong, and if you don't keep your nafs in check, right, things are going to go haywire. So the human being is a complex machine and the Qur'an is to civilize us, understand? It's to take that angelic side and put it above the other strengths of ours. So this is the challenge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. May Allah subhanahu wa make it easy for us to take care of our own children. Give us tawfiq to do their tarbiyah correctly. Parents have a duty towards their kids. Uh, you know, you, it's, they're completely your responsibility. You can't put that responsibility on anyone else. The other, the third strength is quwwat al haywaniya the animalistic. Because the animals, the, the goal of an animal, the, all the gum, all the, all the goal of an animal is just two things, the stomach and the private area. That's all the goals of a, when the, when the animal wakes up in the morning, the bear, the dog, any animal, that's all their goal, that's their objective. Now, is that the human objective? It's not the human objective, that's just a need. We also have a stomach, right? That's a, that's a need, not an objective. Our objective is to worship the creator and become great servants of the creator. Right? But the animal doesn't know that. The animal, animal's goal is just food and um, uh, the, that. So the gum and hum of an animal is what? The gum and hum. Does that mean all the sorrow of an animal is what? Just the stomach and his, his, the private area. That's quwwat haywaniya. So if you and I are like that, that all we think about is food, good food, and this, this is what you're running on, and you have no... And, you know, if you, if you stop listening to your impulse of angelic impulse, that, that, that knocking stops. Then you only run on quwwati shaitaniya and quwwati haywaniya. That's how the human being is created. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. It's not going to be easy for us on Yawm Al-Qiyamah if we keep running on quwwati shaitaniya and quwwati haywaniya. We have to keep our quwwati malakiya, strengthen that quwwati malakiya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. 
And remember, you know, Islam has five pillars, right? Shahada, prayer. All these actually help to have get an angelic side. Fasting, right? Ramadan is around the corner. Why, why are we, what's going to happen when you're fasting? It's going to align you. It's going to set you right. That fasting, the whole 30 days, may Allah SWT give us tawfiq, right? It's fard. Everyone has to do it. There's no exceptions. That I have school or I have this work. It's priority number one is fasting for each person. May Allah make it easy for all of us. May Allah SWT give us tawfiq to do that properly. So salat, zakat, prayer, and hajj. All these five pillars of Islam help with the quwwat malakiyah to go, to come up for. So for that, for that to be higher in you. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the to do amal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to understand what has been said. Wa akhir da'wan alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah